All right, good morning, everybody. Our ongoing quest for knowledge on reducing fractions continues. Get ready for Lesson 82. We're talking about those greatest common factors a little bit more, otherwise known as the GCF. So the greatest common factor, the G stands for greatest, which means the largest number. That's a factor, that's the F, for all the given numbers. All the given numbers is what makes them the common factor. And greatest common factors are used to reduce fractions, so you only have to divide once in order to reduce it to the lowest terms. What may start happening now, you take a look at 8 and 24, and if you don't really use the greatest common factor, maybe you'll say, oh, you could divide both of those by 4. And absolutely, you could. But 8 divided by 4 is 2. And 24 divided by 4 is 6. You still have a pair of even numbers there, don't you? That would be the tip-off right there that that is not in the lowest terms. So the easiest way to figure this out is always go ahead and factor them out. As a matter of fact, if they ask for the greatest common factor, you have to factor them out. So let's start off with factors of 1, right? We've done this enough times. 1 times 8 is going to give us 8. 8 is also an even number, so that means 2 times 4 will also give us 8. And I think that's all the factors for 8 that I can come up with right now, right? Let's move over to 24. I know 1 times 24 because we always want to start off with the easy one, right? It's an even number. This is where your divisibility rules start to help out, so I know I can have 2 times 12, and if I use my divisibility rules, well, 2 plus 4 is 6, and I can divide 6 by 3, so I know 3 has to be a factor. 3 times 8. And one more factor for 24 would be 4 times 6, right? Because remember the divisibility rules for 4, you just have to look at the last two digits. So now that I have them all listed out, I see that I actually have quite a few common factors. One is a common factor of both. Two is a common factor of both. Four is a common factor of both. But the greatest common factor would actually be eight. So when it comes time to try to reduce 8 24 if I only want to have to reduce it one time, I'm going to divide both sides by 8. 8 divided by 8 would be 1. 24 divided by 8 is 3. So 8 24 is really equivalent to 1 third when you get it down to as lowest terms. So they might go and ask you something like this. Find the greatest common factor for each pair of numbers. Remembering your divisibility rules will really help. So let's start off with factors of 12. I have 1 times 12, right? And I know that 12 is an even number, so I can use 2 times 6. And 1 plus 2 is going to equal 3. So I know that 3 has got to be a factor 3 times 4. And I believe that is all the factors I now have for 12, right? Let's go ahead and factor out 36. So let's always start off with the easy one. 1 times 36. 36 is also even, so that means I have 2 times something. Doesn't show up on your multiplication chart, does it? 2 times, can you do it in your head? 2 times 18 is going to give you 36. 3 plus 6 is 9. 
9 is divisible by 3, so I know I have 3 times 12, also equaling 36. And lastly, 4 times 9 will give me 36, right? So now that I have all my numbers listed out, I have lots of common factors, but I only want to know the GCF, the greatest common factor. What is the largest number I have over here that I also have over here? In this case, it would actually be 12. So if I was trying to reduce 1236 and I only want to divide once, I'd want to be using 12 to divide. Let's try it again, listing out the factors. 20 and 100, right? Start off with the easy one. 1 times 20. 20 is even, so I better go ahead and use 2. 2 times 10. 20 ends in a 0, so I know that 5 would be a factor, right? 5 times 4 is going to give me 20. That appears to be all my factors for 20. Let's move over to 100. Do you know them all? We have 1 times 100. Always start with the easy ones, right? What else do we have for factors of 100? It's even. It's not going to show up on your multiplication chart but 2 times 50, right? 4 is a factor of 100 because I have 4 quarters in a dollar. So 4 times 25. 100 ends in 0, so I know 5 is a factor. 5 times 20, and because of the other divisibility rule for 10, I know that 10 times 10 is also 100, right? So now I have all my factors listed out. I am looking for the one greatest common factor. I have lots of common factors, but the greatest common factor that I have listed on both sides would be 20. So if I was going to try to reduce 20 hundreds, I'd want to divide both the numerator and the denominator by 20. So from this assignment onward, if a fraction isn't reduced to its lowest terms, it's going to be marked wrong. You can still go back and get half credit by reducing it more, but they're going to start getting trickier and you want to make sure you're reducing to the lowest terms. So let's take a look here. Find the greatest common factor of 8 and 20. I'm not going to talk you through it so much. Let's just go ahead and write some down right now. All right, factors of 8 gives us 1 times 8 and 2 times 4. The factors for 20, we have 1 times 20, 2 times 10, and 5 times 4, right? So I'm looking for the greatest common factor, and in this case, it would be 4, right? So now it's going to say, use the greatest common factor of 8 and 20. Use 4 to reduce 8 twentieths. So I'm going to go and divide both the numerator and the denominator by 4, right? Numerator divided by numerator, just like we were doing yesterday. 8 divided by 4, hey, that's going to give me... 2. Denominator divided by denominator. 20 divided by 4. That's going to go ahead and give me 5. So I have 2 fifths. I'll tell you right now, if you ever end up with both your numerator and your denominator being even numbers, you did not reduce to lowest terms because if they're both even, that means you could still divide both sides by 2, right? Let's try this one. Reduce by dividing the terms of the fraction by the greatest common factor. If you're not sure, go and list all the factors first. But just pretend that I know 
that the greatest common factor would be 10. Did everybody catch that in their mind, or were you thinking, oh, we'll just go ahead and use 2, Mr. Hines? Nope. 10 divided by 10, that's going to give me 1. 100 divided by 10, that's going to give me 10. So 10 hundredths reduced to its lowest terms would be 1 tenth. Let's try it again. Reduce by dividing the terms of the fraction by the greatest common factor. This one's kind of tricky. Do we know it? Let's take a look at all the different factors. So my factors for 24, I have 1 times 24. It's even, so I have 2 times 12. 2 plus 4 equals 6, so I know 3 is a factor. 3 times 8 and 4 times 6. Let's go over here and figure out the factors for 36. All right, for 36, start with the easy one. We have 1 times 36. One that's not on any multiplication chart that I have. 2 times 18. I know it's 2 because it's even. 3 plus 6 equals 9, so I know 3 is a factor. 3 times 12 and 4 times 9. So I'm going to use my greatest common factor, which appears to be 12, right? I have 12 on that side. I have 12 on this side. So I'm going to divide both sides by 12 to figure out what is 2436 equivalent in its lowest terms. Once I figure out what I'm dividing by, just numerator divided by numerator. 24 divided by 12. That's going to go ahead and give me 2. 36 divided by 12. Denominator divided by denominator. 36 divided by 12. Hey, that's going to go ahead and give me 3. So 2436 equivalent in its lowest terms would be two-thirds. And that, my friends, is the end. You are definitely going to want a scratch piece of paper for today's Socrative quiz, and good luck.